uh, welcome back. In this video I will show you my auto exa and everything that's to it. For that I have to go in my uh, Steam Apps common TF2 TF custom, then the folder you create CFG and there's my auto exa. I'll open that up. I structured my auto exa. I tried to make everything as clear as possible. Let's get right into it. As I previously said, those just common stuff, so everything that's behind those lines uh, does not do anything. So you can forget all of that for now. The first thing is here, uh, accessbinds.cfg. Uh, as I commented here, this will load the binds.cfg file that's in the same folder we were previously, in the cfg folder, and there's the binds.cfg. I will uh, speak about that at the end of this video. Next we have our quick connect. Those aren't really necessary. It's just when I open TF2 and I type, for example, mg in the console, just the word mg, it will automatically connect me. I can show you that for a second. So I'm in TFT right now. Here I have my console and I just type in mge, press enter. And as you can see, it automatically connects me to the server I've set up. If you want to use this command yourself, it's really easy. You just take one of those lines, copy and paste it at the very end. You have your favorite server, whatever it is, like valve, upward, whatever you want. Then in the brackets, you still let this uh, connect word in there. After that, the IP of your server you want to connect, uh, you can get that when you connect to your server and you have it in, like in your browser list. You right click and you will get the uh, IP. Info. You just put it in there. The next part is the arcing config. Arcing config just means it's the commands you use uh, if you have your own server if, or if you rented a server. Those are just uh, commands that make your life easier. For example, letting you like change to a map really easy without uh, knowing any of the extra commands. Uh, I won't really go over this in this video. If someone really wants to know it, you can ask me in the comments or uh, PM me and I might make another video about it. I don't think it's that useful to a lot of people. So that's like all this until the next part. Uh, the next part is the PREC settings. Uh, PREC is an in-game program basically that records demos, so like files of you playing every time uh, tournament mode is enabled or actually you can change whenever it records but it just it automatically records uh, demos of you playing. Explained like how to install the PREC plugin itself in the first video, as uh, so you can go back and watch that if you haven't already. If you really have questions to stuff like that, just ask me in the comments. Okay, uh, the next part, um, other settings, pretty simple. The volume, you can change this number to change the volume of your TF2. Seal interp is shortly <laughs> explained, uh, it's the delay between uh, you and the server. I just set it uh, to zero and change. I'll change it in the specific class convicts. I'll talk more about that uh, later. Reload to one enables auto reload, so you automatically reload every time you don't shoot and you have ammo. Hot say text time three sets the time that your chat appears. So if someone writes something in chat and you set it to three, the written part will go away after three seconds. I think uh, normally it's set to like ten or something, like ten seconds, but that's where too long for me I just set it to three. I have my chat at the uh, bottom left I will write something it will be there and in three seconds it will disappear again that will be every time someone writes something new so the first line will always disappear after three seconds then again uh, if someone else is writing something and you didn't catch it you can still just open the window and uh, scroll up if necessary or anything and can read it up there. Uh, if we desire 90, that's the field of view. If you don't know what the field of view is, just very simple, it's uh, how much you see in an angle. If you want to know more detail, I put a video in there as well, just at the very end. It's really nice, it explains it pretty, pretty good. But you absolutely want to set to 90 because that's the maximum uh, you can set it. And so you can see the maximum. Field of view model changes the field of view of your weapons. I uh, also explained in the video I mentioned pre uh, previously. I just set the stand standard to 90 and change it in the different classes. Hot healing one shows healing numbers and batching one shows damage numbers. 
and her to combat text batching window shows the takes the time the numbers are uh, added together so for example when i do five damage with a, a shotgun on a scout then i wait half a second and do another five damage with the shotgun to the same scout it will show as uh 10 instead of two fives so it sets the interval where it adds those together uh, mine is set to one so one second uh if i shoot once oh it does 20 damage if I shoot another time, just 20 again. If I hold down the button, it adds those numbers up. So those were three shots, 20 each, so 60 damage. Um, however, if you shoot once, then wait more than the time you put in and shoot again, it will show uh, the single damage. Next we have seal hut mini mode that changes how your scoreboard looks. Most custom huts or even the default hut have different scoreboards. One is for 6v6 so it's smaller that's if you enable this and one is for uh, 9v9 or more so Highlander or public servers. Hut takes screenshots or just saves the scoreboard screenshot at the end of a map was useful uh, previously for competitive TF2. Not anymore, to be honest. Now we're at the hit sound settings. Uh, hit sounds are the sounds that come up when you hit someone. Uh, first of you enable it with this command, TF dingling one. The next maximum damage changes how uh, your hit sound sounds when you hit like a, a small damage shot uh, or a high damage shot. Next up we have the volume of the hit sound. 2 is the maximum, 0 is the minimum, probably. Just changes how loud hit sound is. Mouse stuff. First of all, sensitivity. M underscore raw input, you sh really should have this turned to 1. That means that TF2 doesn't take uh, your PC or, or your desktop PC sensitivity in count. Uh, the rest right here is not that important. You can go through it yourself if you want to. Uh, as I said, everything pretty much explained after the lines. Crosshair 1 enables your crosshair, you should probably have that enabled. But you've had no crosshair on scope zoom, that makes it so your crosshair disappears when you zoom in. If you set it to 1, if you set it to 0, you will still have your crosshair when you zoom in as a sniper. Now that's just my crosshair settings, so crosshair scale 24, that's the size of the crosshair. Uh, crosshair 9 is the type of the crosshair, I have a uh, cross. And then the colors, 255 is the maximum, zero is the minimum, so I have just all of green, none of blue, none of red. Hot fa fast switch 1 enables your fast switch weapon menu, so uh, when you freshly install TF2 and you scroll with the mouse wheel for example, or press 2 or 3 to change a weapon, you have to uh, press it once, then it will show up a little menu at the, at the top right. And you have to press it again, so you have to accept your change, which is really bad because it costs a lot of time. For the auto accent, that's pretty much it. After that, it's my uh, FPS config. The FPS config just changes how your game looks, like the graphical stuff. I use Chris FPS config. I moderated myself uh, slightly. I would recommend you not touching that. Unless you really know what you're doing, but you can ruin yourself a lot if you change some of that. Uh, the only thing you can or should change is, uh, first of all, CL show frames 1. That just shows your FPS, your frames per second in the top right corner. And FPS max, uh, that sets uh, the maximum FPS you will get out of TF2. So if you have a pretty decent computer, uh, you can get that higher as 132, but consider as soon as it drops sometimes, you will lose information. So you really want uh, a stable FPS, so you don't want ever to drop like more than 10 frames uh, lower than your max FPS is. That's why I have it to 132, because I have a 60 hertz monitor. Uh, it's explained um, up there as well. Um, I have a 6 hertz monitor, so 132 should be the minimum um, I should get. 
other than that, there's really not a lot to change. You can look into a good connection back connection that changes like your settings slightly and your net settings, um, depending on if you have a good connection or back connection, obviously. Uh, as well, if you really want to look into that, maybe ask me or like look into that stuff. Uh, ex explains pretty pretty good. Other than that, here are sprays. Um, disabled if you want to enable uh, your sprays so if you want to see the, the sprays you can spray in TF2 you just delete that in front of the enable spray uh, like it says uncommon this section uncommon it just means as I said deleting that and putting it in front of that I'm here with shadows again if you want to enable your shadows some people want I don't because I uh, I drop FPS when I have shadows enabled you just delete those and put it up there uh, facial features other than that like as I said I wouldn't really mess around with that especially like the graphical part it really can mess up your TF2 if you don't know what you're doing and it's really hard to find out what your error was. Okay, uh, now as promised, uh, at the end I will go over the access binds file that is opened at the very uh, top. So for that uh, I just open my binds config and in here um, basically what this, this does is it opens like all class binds. So we'll open this file in most of my specific class configs. Um, I'm starting uh, with unbound mouse2 and bind mouse2 to, to attack2. To. That's just a safety um, bind. I put in there like the unbind and bind again because I bound my mouse2 to, to other stuff and other configs. So just to make sure I did this doesn't really mean anything. Bind mouse 3 to toggle uh, my few models. That means when I press mouse 3, so the scroll wheel on my mouse, so right here, when I press on this, it will show my few models of the weapons or it will disappear again. Like if I press it once, it will show. If I press it twice, it will disappear. Okay, um, so as you see, you can see the few models, you can see the frame thrower. And now I press my middle mouse button and it will disappear. Press it again and it will show again. That's basically the toggle view model. Bind mouse 4 to slot 3, that's melee. Uh, mouse 4 is the little button at the lower, like, see it right here. So if, if that's the mouse, it's the lower of the two buttons. Uh, if I press that, it will change to my slot 3, so that's my melee most of the times. Uh, same with mouse 4, that's the upper button. It will change to my slot 1, so my first primary weapon. Um, if I mouse wheel up, doesn't matter how often, I will change to my slot 1, so my primary weapon, my first one. Mouse wheel down will always change to my slot 2 weapon. The rest, like after like slot 1, slot 2 and everything, uh, is always just uh, like minor changes, like um, draw a few models. So when I use mouse wheel, I will always have my few models on and stuff like that. Bind K, explode. Press K, I will explode. It's important for mainly competitive. Sometimes. Okay, um, the next thing is really useful. Uh, it's called crouch jump or lazy jump. Uh, that allows you to press only space and it will hit space and your crouch key at the same time. That's useful, first of all, if you want to jump over uh, obstacles. Uh, I will show you an example. Okay, I'm here on the map uh, CP Badlands and um, right here when I just try to jump up this little thing, the, these boxes, it doesn't work. You see, I, I'm pressing the arrow key and I'm trying to jump up. And if I pr uh, do the crouch jump, as I did right now, I can just jump up. Um, you will see when I land on there, I'm crouched and I stand up. So you have to be crouched for that. And that's basically what the lazy jump does.
Next up we have something really interesting, it's called the loadout switcher. Uh, as well it's it's for competitive mainly, or if you're just lazy. Uh, what that does is if you press um, F1 to F4, it will switch between your loadouts. Uh, I'll show you in a second what I mean, like it switch between A, B, C, D, or 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever HUD you have. Okay, we'll show you the loadout switcher now. Uh, as you can see, I have four loadouts, A, B, C, and D. My day right now, uh, flare gun and everything. And now I will press F2. Now I have the shotgun, and I'm at B. Press 3, C. Now I have something that's called scoreboard binds. Scoreboard binds just binds your tab to scores. So as normal, you press tab, it will bring up your scoreboard. And here you can choose between different options. I've explained it here as well. Uh, you can choose between having the scoreboard and showing how much time is left, showing the respawn timers your teammates have, and the net graph. The net graph just shows like uh, the package losses and how much FPS and how your real ping is and stuff like that. Here again, like in previous stuff, you just remove what you want to have enabled, like remove the um, the lines here that you want to enable on both, and put it where it wasn't. I have the net graph at the moment, uh, and that basically looks like that. The net graph is the little thing at the bottom right of my screen. As you see, um, I'm holding my um, tab, so the scoreboard comes up, and at the top at the bottom right, there's also the net graph. Uh, there are two different parts. First of all, normally, when I'm on a normal server, there's a graph that shows uh, package loss and everything. Beneath that are my FPS, and on the right side, my ping. It's zero because I'm on a local server at the moment. And then uh, in out and package loss and everything. Uh, in the end, <laughs> there are the most important parts of the config, some people would say. Uh, it's just text binds. Uh, first I have competitive text bind reminders, so when I play a lobby, for example, um, in a semi-competitive environment, uh, I can press O and it will tell my team this text, please wait for the medic, slash build Uber with the medic. Uh, it's, it's just a really simple bind, it binds O to say to the team. And uh, if you want to change whatever is in here, you just change everything right here. Like you can say and save it and it will just say that. Uh, same here, I bound P. And then I have something really interesting. Um, I actually uh, got that from a bind that Slyn uses. It's a bind circle. Uh, so when I press I, I bound I to it it will access the command random bind and random bind just circles through those binds so when i press it once it will say this bind when i press it again it will say this bind this bind and again and again over and over and yeah that's pretty much it for the auto exa um just a quick reminder auto exa is what it, the the file that loads at the very beginning of the game when you start it. In my auto exa, I also load my file binds at the very beginning, so it loads those as well. So basically, I start TF2, it loads those two things. It loads um, all my TF2 settings, all my binds, uh, all my um, graphic stuff, like basically everything uh, in this one file. So if you have any questions, uh, let me know. Uh, as I said during the video, if you want to know something more specific to a certain t um, area, just let me know, ask me, I'll maybe answer just directly, or maybe if there is huge demand I will post another video. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the auto exa part of the video series. Uh, thanks for watching, I hope I could help you, and I'll see you in the next one.